Hello guys and welcome to the Pro Dota Cup series by Smashcast TV. We are in what could be the last match of the day. We're certainly in the last best of three as it's the Pro Dota Cup for the American version that decides who's going to go for the finals against Thunder Awakens. We have a match between Elite Wolves and Wheel Wreck while whistling and we've already watched game number one where Wheel Wreck while whistling was destroyed by Elite Wolves much like their name indicates in a complete categorical stomp with a 17k net worth lead at the end of the game showing Elite Wolves dominance in this Pro Dota Cup. Now, in game number two, Wheel Wreck while whistling will have to survive by taking this game, or else they will be officially out of the tournament and will have no chance to beat Thunder Awaken. And Pat history will repeat itself with the Lee Wolves getting another 2 0 against them. The same 2 0 that sent them down to the losers' brackets. It'll be like their mortal enemy, Emesis thing. Now, that said, guys, my name is D Swordfish. I'll be your cast for today. Joining me today will be Vati. How you doing, my friend? Hey, I'm looking at the pick of the Will Requiem Whistling, Clockwork and Warlock. We haven't seen Clockwork for quite a while in American Dota, I believe. And now they have realized probably their mistakes or some kind of things which went uh, awfully wrong. And they're going for a strong lane support. Warlock works out just fine yet. For Elite Wolves, there's going to be a position... How are they going to link this? So it's going to be a bristle back off lane in position for Shaker, or bristle will go for carry. And as we say in Russia, it's going to be a full Davai for Elite Wolves. They will prove that they can also play very aggressive and show how to get a lane dominance to will. I mean, with the, with the Warlock, this is a pick that we saw last game, or we wanted, at least I want. I wanted last game. It, it does seem to suit their draft much more. It does counter Elite Wolves a bit better. Because, of course, uh, the Warlock here with the Shadow Ward is able to uh, secure lanes and also cancel a lot of aggression. I mean, they be running. And with Wheel, they're actually running a Necrophos. Wow, interesting pick. I mean, with the Warlock, that works quite nicely. Because you actually have a lot of healing in addition to a good amount of team fight. They could run the Necrophos off lane, which we've seen uh, Thunder... Not Thunder, sorry. It was Infamous running. And the classic King Tekka pick, Necrophos off lane, taking a page out of the Perugans books. It would not be a crazy idea, especially considering you have a Garden... The Garden Greaves magic stick build we've seen recently is ridiculous on him. And Necrophos has been a common counter against Bristleback because he can heal himself completely back up with the Ghost Shroud. In addition, to be able to just look at the Bristleback in the face, Reaper Scythe him and put him in place. Oh, well, yeah. With that, we all while whistling. Much stronger draft than before, but um, tell me, what, what do you see in Elite Wolves draft? How about that ancient apparition? Very much like that as well. Well, whew, they got a lot of magical damage with the Echo Slam and the Ice Blast. We saw in the U series uh, today an amazing combination between uh, Clockwork, Clockwork, uh, it was Ancient Apparition, Clockwork, and who was the... It was Lina or Queen of Pain, I actually don't remember, but AA is working amazingly. Yet the question is, who is going to play in Necrophos for Will? Do they have... Because right now it seems to me that they are lacking damage quite a lot. Maybe it's a Necro for KVH, we previously saw him playing this hero. Like, Dota the 2 was running in offlane uh, Necro too, but... It worked out... Better on the KVH. We saw something like that before, and it was um, a bad one. Maybe a bad one. Necrophos, like a lot of, a lot, of, a lot of lobs. Well, same for right. uh, side of wheel. It was against Thunder Awaken, if I remember. And they got a Storm Spirit, and actually Storm Spirit may be an option here. There is not that much of a lockdown, and if Will will keep enough of sustain, Storm will just jump around, kill AA, and things. We'll go. We'll look good. I mean, <laughs> the sustain is pretty good, but like you Weaver. said, the ancient apparition can cancel this. The weaver now. Oh, a different hero. Actually, very. They're really, really varying their lineup. I like this. Um, the ancient apparition can be really strong against any sustain-based lineup because of the ice blast. So it's really dangerous to go fully on. The Abaddon warlock works better when you don't. The AA. Uh, the weaver is the pick for wheel, which is going to give them a bit more sustain. So they're not going for that kind of strategy. But of course, if you get hit by the uh, Ice Blast, you're going to have a hard time trying to time lapse all that damage. And Elite Wolves have a good amount of... Not, not much control, but enough control right now for the Weaver just with the Earth Shaker. You can still pick a second support. Or actually, sorry, not a second support because Bristleback is most likely offlane. You can still pick a carry with a stun, for example, to stop the Weaver. I mean, they have a lot of options here. The Any carry that can pick up a Diffusal Blade would be great to dispel that Ghost Shroud from the ne Necrophos. So Juggernaut... Uh, actually, that's the only thing. Ursa, maybe? But Ursa against Necrophos seems like a weak pick. Mm. Considering it's... Considering it is actually... Mino's gonna be playing that. 
You can even go for the Timber Saw again. I don't think the Timber Saw is that bad of an idea. You have enough stuns already. The Bristle Pack deals a lot of physical damage. Timber Saw destroys the Necrophos. And of course, the Weaver also gets wrecked by Timber Saw's area damage. It could be a possibility for Elite Wolves. And their lineup is really versatile right now, so they have to show one of their cards here. Either their carry or their mid has to come out. And they're... Wow, okay. They go for Leo Style's Ember Spirit. Screw the Necrophos, they say. Go full magical damage with the Ember. Once he reaches level 12, go Shroud. Good luck saving yourself with that. Well, even though there's plenty of sustain from Sarah Wheel, the amount of magical burst from Elite Wolves is completely insane. And like, okay, they got some heal on Necro, they got heal on Warlock. Ancient Apparition counters that with the efficient Ice Blast, and we already saw with what Ember Spirit with Veil of Discord is capable of, and even though we there is a sneaky one, his amount of HP won't save him from this deadly combination anytime, so they need to come up with some kind of a mid laner against Ember Spirit. What can they possibly uh, can go for? I Annihilate is not that uh, variative in terms of the mid picks, though. Uh, he plays the same um, heroes over and over again, we mostly saw him in Quop and on Invoker. Mm, I'm not sure about like these both heroes. Queen of Pain didn't really work out previous time for them. Also, there's like Ember Spirit, a lot of burst. They got rude. Uh, that's a tough game, obviously, for Will, to be honest. W any ideas for mid lane for Will? Mm, for Will? Uh, a Quap? I mean, it doesn't really seem that bad this game, honestly, against the M. But if it hasn't. The Invoker also doesn't seem... I mean, if you're going for Annihilate's heroes, Invoker Quap seem okay. The game Invoker particularly actually stands out because of his ability to stop the Ember Spirit Bristle Black combination with Clockwork. You have a lot of team fight on your team. They might just want to run Necrophos mid, but it seems like they most likely they want him as a carry and then Weaver in the off lane. And it's just that Wheel, will, no matter what they do, they won't have the strongest of lanes because Necrophos is kind of awkward where to put him. And of course the Weavers, because that makes me question, is that going to be a Weaver in the offlane? Maybe it's a Clockwork in the offlane, you need a second support, and maybe that's a Weaver's support. And the versatility in Wheels lineup makes it hard to entirely. For now, we'll go for Elite Wills, which still needs a carry. Well, that or Shaker's going to be playing the support position, and what carry could you run? I mean, they assumed there was a position for Earthshaker Shaker going in the offlane, and Bristleback carry Ember Spray in mid. Dark. Oh, wow. no, it's a carry crystal back. Oh, good prediction in the very beginning. So they get a lot of tankiness. Ooh, and that vacuum into Ice Blast, into Echo Slam, and then the Remnants. That, that's a dead, that's a dead team. Storm Spirit. Storm Spirit, we completely forgot about this fella. I mentioned him quite a bit before. And how is it going to be? It's going to be a Weaver solo against... Against Doxy and Warlock. Necro probably going to... An aggressive dueling, local roaming realm, something like this, probably. Yet, this is a good idea. Well, a storm is actually quite good if you look at elite. And you can only stop with the searing chains, vacuum, and any all of our shaker spells. Okay, that's all right. That that's not too much. On you know, storm space, should be able to do. The only issue is storm space has a really weak laning phase, and elite wolves has a tank to mid. Of course, on top of that, you also gonna want to fight in the mid lane in the mid game, and you're not really gonna have much power there because the Bristleback should outrank your Necrofoes in terms of mid game potential. The Weaver similarly is only gonna not gonna deal that much damage, and eh, Wheel themselves don't have many stuns. The Storm Spirit maybe the only thing that can really stop the Ember Spirit here, maybe with the Necrofoes ultimate as well. But relying on the Battery Assault or the Orlock ultimate, it's not gonna be too great. In fact, you don't even have a single long stun except for the Scythe of Ice, not sorry, the Weaver Scythe and the. Electric Vortex. I gotta give it to Elite Wolves again. They seem to have a much more complete lineup. Their team fight seems stronger as well. And besides pickoffs, there's no area where they really lose against Wheels lineup. Well, game is promising to be interesting, and I'm quite puzzled. I would love to see so which kind of decision teams made about their lining. How are they going to? place their lanes because well weaver can deal uh, with doxia solo so it may work out media to be from madman on top shrine he got two observer wards must have got only one some classic ward probably expected here yeah oh or another guess no he's going for high ground ward no. which gives much more vision offline weaver Offlane with what? Uh, oh. Well, it's carry. It's carry with an offensive yeah. dueling. Yeah, a, a offensive trialing. dueling. Aggressive <laughs> trialing, maybe. I mean, 
Yeah, because, yeah, the third hero being Clockwork, he's probably going to rotate a bit in the beginning, but then go for the offensive tiling. I don't mind it, actually. Necrophos can really last his own against a... Earthshaker? Dark no, sorry, Darkshaker. Yeah, sorry, Darkshaker. <laughs> Why? I keep thinking Earthshaker off lane. I can't, uh, I've only seen GH play Earthshaker position 4 recently, and I mean, he played it really well. But anyway, Papita, oh, and Milan. Uh, Papita can go down bottom here against the Necrophos with the magic stick. You can actually have an insane amount of sustain. You already see how much healing he has. We've seen the uh, the power of the Ghost Shroud. Honestly, do not underestimate this hero whatsoever. But before we do so, let's let's present the teams real quick. We'll start off with the guys at a wheel. We're gonna have in the Radiant side the American team. Derp Derp will be fighting for their life here on the Warlock in the support position. Carry is gonna be KVH on the Weaver in the mid lane is Tor Spirit by Annihilate. He I annihilate, sorry. Oh, they're actually already going on S and S, but great fissure with a chilling touch. They want to fight back. Man Mang realizes he's in rock territory and Stinger wants to fight him here head on. They're gonna get one last hit, but they don't have chilling touch anymore. Stinger will be the target of aggression, and they're gonna be able to finish off this Earth Shaker with just one little hit from the Weaver. Derp Derp, meanwhile, being followed through and it, and mid there, it's gonna be Masoko getting that kill. Support for support, but first blood goes to wheel. And I forgot where I was. Clockwork, I think, yeah. Madman <laughs> here in the support position. And finally, Necroforce played by Dota 2. Present Elite Wolves real quick, please. Well, I was just like really worried about the dusting of KVH. He manages to get out. So on offlane for Elite Wolves, Papita playing Docs here. Position for Earthshaker for Stinger. Masoko playing Ancient Liberation. Ember Spirit, Leo style, and Bristle Carry as an S. Uh, the Minos, Minos is a carry. Uh, the guy who always yeah. is famous for changing his name from Kotaro Hayama to everything possible, but at least in the Peruvian community, we're gonna call him Minos uh, because of that was his first name. <laughs> and we're never gonna let that happen, Ch let that change. So, <laughs> the, the lanes, <clears throat> quite aggressively, what do you think of this aggressive dual lane for now? You think they have enough power to get a kill, or is it just a more of a harassment? Oh, try them, try them. Yeah, actually, Bristleback is suffering quite a lot. He still doesn't have his passive, so he's dropping quite low on HP. They found Masuko, or they found Tank. That's the question. They are running on the Bristleback. There is a Shadow Ward on him. They're chasing until the very end, yet he's still got three stick charges. Popping oh, no. Oh, South. Why? Yeah, he had Why? magic stick. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Why? Now, yep, goodbye, oh, Minos. Bitch. It's going to be a death game. There's a Fisher, great Fisher, saving wow. his teammate. Yet there are still bonds, and will they be able to trade for Weaver Stinger? They are dropping so low, and Mad Mank is going on a rampage. He is ready to fight till the very end. He's popping stick. battery assault. Six. Oh. Th oh, they're killing each other. That's beautiful. It's Romeo and Juliet style death. They fell right next to each other, you know, hand in hand. But <laughs> sadly. Yeah, those Starcrest lovers will have to kill each other. Mad Mang, uh, going for level 1 battery assault just for the extra damage there at the end. And it worked out. I mean, getting the kill on the Bristleback is obviously more worth it than getting the kill on the Clockwork. And I do, be yeah, I do believe that Bristleback died first, so we got no experience out of that kill. Or at least shouldn't have gotten any experience. So it works properly. And with that, yeah, Elite Wolves, yeah, already suffering a lot in this mid lane, in this top lane. Maybe I didn't want that good, but time for... I and I like, actually be cautious because Stinger is going back. He will get a TP or something like this. He gets his Fisher, he's level 2. And with, well, Le Leo style got double damage, got 2 points in Flame God. And I think that may be a kill on mid. Yet, I'm not sure if they want to defend. Oh, Masoko tipping out. That's going to be, that's going to be fine. He's forced to go back to maybe. Maybe some kind of a smoke. Yep, here comes the TP. They're refilling the bottle for League of Style. Or actually bring it. Stinger is standing in the position. Oh, Mad Mang. They saw each other. Well, now both mid laners should be cautious. Oh, he's not scared of anything. He's not caring about this Ember Spirit and Fisher and everything. is in a safe face. Power Cogs. We'll take a look at the... Top lane, everything is finally fine for Bristleback, he gets his passive. And on the easy lane, both Doxia and Necrophos are doing quite even. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yet uh, Stinger was forced out of the lane and Mad Bank anno annoyed Leo style quite a bit. He got only one bottle charge left. Well, hmm. we'll see. I mean, Mad Bank is going up to the high ground, it's a bit dangerous here. Especially against Stinger, Leo Star wants to join him, Searing Chains first off. Ooh, the Cogs, Stinger in the middle of them. 
But with that Stinger, should still be able to survive this. Only level 1 battery assault doesn't deal that much damage just yet. Flame Guard activates. Stinger realizing he has to fight Annihilate as well. Great Fissure to zone out Madman. But Leo Style already lost his Flame Guard. So on level 2 in the Storm Spirit already has level 2 Static Remnant. That extra level for the Ember Spirit, giving him a huge advantage against the... Sorry, for the Storm Spirit, giving him a huge advantage against the Ember. With that, Annihilate is able to stop the aggression. And the Elite Wolves not going to have the early game domination they looked for last game. Actually, it was... Um... Well, I, I don't know, there was no overload on Storm Spirit that probably it could have been in Death of Stinger, yet he got an Invis rune, and oh, Leosta was forced to go back. He still got one Fairy Fire, probably it's worth committing. Stinger is wrapping around, he's ready with his Fisher. I mean, he's is standing in the middle of the river, yet he's almost level 6 and he will get his level from this pack of creeps. So yeah, nothing to be afraid of, uh, time to be afraid for Leosta. If the creeps will die in time, Maybe a death. Will he commit? Yep. Oh, he's popping fairy fire, trading his. Well, at least they will kill each other. Tower, will it be merciful? Bottle just in time. Masoko. Oh, oh fish. Sure. Well, that's a revenge. That's a revenge, finally, for Leo Style and Minas being dove. Oh, that's going to be a death of him. Oh, they're popping the cogs. He's trying to run away. He got boots. That's plenty of stacks of the quill spray, yet not... Oh, bird. Mad Mang. Mad Mang survived on 50 HP, 5 stacks. Oh, Stinger. Stinger, maybe he will collect some fruit once again. Fisher no. blocking out Derp Derp. Unfortunately, it's being missed. Not getting his sweet candy. Meanwhile, on Mid lane and the spirit still level 5, but you will get level 6 soon. Things are going to be better. Try and pop for both supports. Madman. Try and solve the raided. Healing is not needed. Yep, he's actually picking up. Uh, hit. Oh, Leo Spell. Even with the Flame God, he dropped so dangerously low. And I may like, keep on chasing him. He's still got oh. Remnant and flying away. Well, in the previous uh, matchup, we were. Claiming the absolute domination of um, it was a buck, right? The absolute domination and uh, experience advantage for Leo style, but actually, Annihilate manages to prove us that things are not that, not the way it seemed before. And finally, he's ahead. Well, um, he's, he's gonna be alone against Battery Assault. Uh, they did actually go on him because Stinger has the boot. A bit afraid yeah, that there yeah. could be a counter initiation. Here with the help of Ancient Apparition, both Elite Wolves players are unable uh, to finish off that kill either. So, it wheels aggression, the best part about this is that it's not being punished whatsoever. Yeah, uh, and actually... Yeah, yeah, it's actually none at all. They, they, they just go in, look at this, they go in them against Masoku, and there's no TPs, nothing to help now. Masoku is gonna die here. Dogs, easy kill. However, the cold feet, maybe they can finally counter this shit. Now the Dark Street joining in, cold feet actually freezes, and the poor clockwork, and now with a surged up bristleback, there's no way he can run away. The cold spray to finish him off, beautiful fissure by Stinger. Next objective is KVH. Stinger's actually lasting a lot of damage with the Iron Shell, a bit hard to fight this. Meanwhile, Leo Style dies in the middle lane against the Annihilate player, and. The Elite Wolves will be able to... will not be able to get that kill on the Weaver. Well, finally. Finally, Iron Annihilate is proving that his nickname choice was not bad at all. Well, and actually... Actually, Dota, the two managed to bully Pepita out of the lane completely. He forced him to go back and he's full on HP. His passive works just amazingly well. And Ancient Operation is... Um, is an easy prey for Clockwork and Weaver, unfortunately. So Masoku died actually only once. He managed to die only once, and the main target was Bristleback. Uh, the problem in this uh, all for Elite Wolves that um, probably they were hoping for some kind of a domination from Ember Spirit and early uh, Snowball, but it didn't really work out, and they do not have a reliable carry. Like. Okay, they got a lot of magical damage, but Mina's got super punished in his lane. He died like two times. Yeah, I understand that it's not that much, but in the end, Bristleback is still a Bristleback, and well, Necrophos probably uh, does much more uh, than this hero. Maybe I'm wrong though, but Ripper's Scythe is a super, super strong thing. And fights yeah, so it's an ultimate, so <laughs> I guess it's a pretty strong yeah. ability. No, like, <laughs> what I want to say that um, his ult make, makes a 
big difference uh, in the team fights. And oh, also... Wow. What are you doing? Sorry, <laughs> did you just see that? He dropped the bottle just to, to show off that he has invisible. Aha, I'm laughing at you. Full <laughs> taunt. Anyway, go on. Yeah, what I want to just point out that uh, fights for a whale should not be um, fast, I guess. It's just, it's a storm spirit jumping on someone, bursting to the half of the HP bristleback. He's so confident in himself. He's not got a vanguard, so he's not really caring about the KVH. KVH got no mana for time lapse, yet he got nine magic wand charges. Oh, Leo style he comes for the rescue. KVH had to pop time lapse. I and LA jumping in. Bristleback on a really dangerously low HP. Oh, they're so. Oh, Leo style dead. For a very long time, wow. double kill, triple everyone. kill, minus four, <laughs> and everyone are dying to passive. It's just, it's just Masoko there. Uh, poor Masoko was like, hi guys, <laughs> I, was there an initiation? Is there a team fight? I'm just farming. <laughs> Trying to get that ice blast up, and uh, we all, I mean, they don't actually capitalize on this by taking a tower, but that was a really good team fight for them. Necrofall's getting a lot of kills there, obviously now increasing his net worth considerably. He's leading the net worth charts. The Bristleback pick has not worked so well for them because they canceled his early game. Uh, Lee Wolves, unlike the last game where you had a Sven, you don't have the late game this time. Masoko trying to TP away from KVA, should be able to make it in time. And with that, at least they won't die. But in the mid lane, they do get a kill on the Earthshaker, who goes against Mad Men, and realizes the Clockwork is a scrappy little robot able to get the kill on the enemy support. Leo style walking in, knowing Mad Men doesn't have much goal or much uh, much farm or er, er, mana. Leo style is going to go walk up to the region room and continue to farm this lane. Well, maybe it's time to Mad Mank to chill a bit. Meanwhile, on the top lane, Bristleback is suffering so hard against Necro. There are three stacks of Quilling Spray on. Dota the two, but he doesn't care. He's a necro. And who, who is the real Bristol back now when, like, we mostly see this absolute dominance by Bristol on the lane, a lot of HP passive, just not caring about a single thing, and he's being bullied out by the solo necro, but that's understandable, and annihilate with the overload, he's ready to jump, and target will be Masoko, Fisher. Well, time to back off for Elite Wolves, yet Leo's style is running top lane, he is ready to help his teammates. That's the tricky part for Will. They get golems, so probably they will be able to fight back yet. So we shouldn't underestimate the burst from Ember Spirit. And finally, Ice Blast uh, is up on Masoko. Mm -hmm. That's good. That, that means they can team fight now a bit more safely. They don't have Echo Slam though, and Stinger's only level 4, and that's the issue. You really want to rely a bit on your Shaker to have some team fight because the Ember Spirit has not got enough farm for him to just kind of snowball like we've seen Leo Style play in the past. And with this, the guys at, uh, at Wheel can just win the team fight basically because they have the Golem ultimate, they have the Reaper side, they have much more team fight potential. Even a hook shot by Mad Men, able to pick it, picks off someone and get a 4 versus 5. And look at that hook shot as we speak about it. You know, they're gonna be stuck in the cogs. He's gonna try to destroy them. We'll do so in time. The cogs pulling away. Reaper side hits him from behind, but doesn't matter as they'll have enough damage to finish him off. There is a dead Minos with an extra 10 second cooldown. Or 10 second, uh, 10 seconds added to his respawn time. Well, meanwhile, on the mid lane, there was a killing attempt on uh, Iron Annihilate, yet here Ice Blast was missed. He simply ran away and snatched the double damage rune from Storm Spirit. That's a real, really a headache for Masoko now. He's an easy target. He can't really run away. Yet, Leo Star, what is he going for? He's going for Boots of Travel. He skips his Veil of Discord because, well, I guess this item already lost its momentum. Yeah, yeah. Needs to come back in the game. Yet, there he comes. Shot Ice Blast. Oh, Mad Mank taking so much damage. I need late trying to burst down Leo's style. He's hoping the round that will keep on chasing. Oh, he's going in. Oh, that's too deep. That's too deep, friend. They keep on chasing him. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Stinger finishing him off with the totem golems. But Peter trying to run away, being clapped to death by Golem. KVH keep on chasing Leo style. Leo style popping Flame God. And surviving this, meanwhile, Toto D2 shows no mercy, keeps on chasing for Bristleback. He's trying to run, he faces KVH, maybe it's going to be a death of him. There's still Shrine, Stinger, still level 5, no follow up, and let's save the day for their 10. Jesus, this guy has been cancelled this game. Level 5, and it's hard to, especially in Archer. For... I'm looking too good. Ice Blast at least will hit the other two. Can we follow this up? No, with only one fire room left. Leo Style doesn't want to just dump in. And here you go. I think the Trial Boots here is a really good option considering, like you said, he did not do that so well in the lane, so skip the Veil Discord. There's no point in getting it. You really need to be able to 
um, travel and help your team. And now in goes Annihilate, catches the Bristleback. They knew Migos was there. And with the swarm, that's a dead Bristleback. Now they accepted that being Masoku. It's a nice blast. Hook shot. Oh no! It's actually Leo Stall who got caught out here. They can't stun him out. Cogs though to bring him in. Okay, the cold feet won't trigger, but Stinger will still die to Annihilate's damage. Had enough gold to finish him off. There's the Reaper Scythe being used. Masoku finally being harassed by the Weaver. He does get a kill onto the clocker before he dies, but as a result, will die himself. And with that, another two kills for the Necropost. Total of the two is more than happy with how this game is going. And it seems like there's going to be a stomp, but this time for the Americans. Well, a little also unable to fight back in the previous uh, game. They won at least their mid lane oh, what heavily, you, what? but... Minus? Minus. That well, fun? there is no threat for him. Well, well, he's going to be fine. There okay. is no... He, he, he doesn't care. He doesn't care that much. He He's a bristleback. You know, it's like uh, this hero sometimes changes the mental state of people. You just feel like running in, not caring about anything. He's actually playing without the nasal go. Uh, of course, you don't well, get it until level yeah. 10, yeah. 11. I mean, there's no point in it because you're losing by so much. There's no way you're going to be able yeah. to use the, the nasal go. You can't even take Roshan with it so, right now because you have no control over the map whatsoever. Look at these aggressive boys. Uh, this ward over here by Wheel. This ward over here as well. They are amazingly good warding spots. This ward sees all rotations with a tier 2 to the jungle, meaning that anyone that wants to form a jungle, aka Minos, oh, you're screwed, because they can just come in with a storm and use their global lineup to punish you. This ward is here as well. Stops the shrine rotation. So if you TP to the shrine to start trying to help your team, set up a smoke, whatever, nope, that's not happening. They're going to destroy you as well. So Wheel has a good control over the map, and they plan on keeping it. Let's see if Elite Wolves can defend this. Come in with an Ember Spirit. Uh, three remnants ready, and that's a level one. Ooh, that's level one. That's not gonna be enough damage. Oh, flame guard, and they go. That the is a necrophose, but the clocker from behind, and now he's been rooted. Can they really help him out? Yep, they will. With a beautiful back plus ice blast, they actually might be able to turn this around. The poor clocker has been left alone. He can't really heal himself up because of that ice blast. And with this elite wolves, will not only save the ember spirit, but also get a kill in the process. Now, maybe go on to the Warlock. He's been upheavaling for too long, so in chains. They do want to freeze the Warlock at the very least, so don't have the ultimate, but the ultimate... Oh, does not come in time! The freeze comes last second! Now the Echo Slap, the ultimate finally brought down! And as he drops the base, the Earthshaker drops his life! And now Papita, next target of aggression. The Electric Vortex catches the Bristleback. He puts him in a difficult position. Minas wants to play really tankily here, but it's not the best of plays because he doesn't have enough survivability. He's going to go down to the, the damage. Here, Ember Spirit walks in, kills the Warlock, but will sacrifice his life as a result, and the guys from Wheel will get three kills for the price of two, definitely worth it for them as they kill two cores in the process. Oh, oh here comes the Ice Blast. Yep, only hitting the KVH. Not that much of an issue. And I was not sure about the Leo style. He still got a Remnant and committed it for the Warlock kill. Probably he could have, es probably he could have escaped. I, I mean... Oh, okay, bye bye, Masoko. Yeah, oh, Masoko. Oh, maybe not. Oh, uh, late. Still alive. Nah, <laughs> he's dead. Well, dead yet. Annihilate is frozen. 16 blast on charges flying away yet, and there's this surge and keep on chasing. Oh, here comes the suicide. Here comes the Fisher. Any kind of a follow up, but with, without Leo Cell, there's not enough damage. Hookshot initiation. Papita being trapped in Cogs. Dota, the two fighting until the very end. It's going to be a Devil's Minus once again. Crybaby Stinger is dying to Fatal Bones. Will they find him? Madman is going on a hunt. Bye bye, Stinger. He's trying to pop the Fisher. He's fighting till the very end. I Nicolate catching up in his platform charges and Leo style is completely alone. He's got motivated still. Oh, nope. That was a very unfortunate fight for Elidus. And now they got no tools of stopping Wheel from rolling over them. The vote of Atus is actually an extremely important pickup for for Will. It's super important to shut down Ember Spirit. As you already mentioned in the very beginning, they don't have uh, that much of a lockdown from side of uh, Will. Oh, what? Like, what they got? Uh, Hookshot, Golems, and Vortex. That's not that much. That's not that much at all. And if we'll take a look at the difference in the net worth, Ember Spirit is having twice less net worth than Storm. And another and another kill for Dota the two. This Necrophos who already picked up oh, what? GG okay. 80 minutes. They realize that they can't well. turn it anymore. What a storm. I mean that oh is my God. that is a stomp. That that was Oh, I don't know what to say. What what do you say to that? That was a really anticlimactic ending. Um good job, Wheel. Congratulations. That was a really much better draft. We did say it in the first game they got drafted and they did they did. The mechanical skill was not below Elite Wolves, and it shows in this game where they draft something they're comfortable with, a new pick for Annihilate, still creative with the Necrophos, and 
destroy wheel uh, destroy leave wolves really punish that bristleback pick with the necrophos it was a fantastic pickup and obviously great place by there by mad Meng in the clockwork but like i said this this was the necrophos game it was the hero that really made them the game early on the stuns they provided the healing as well being able to sustain the bristleback and destroy him in lane as well it, it just worked so well for wheel all the pieces put in together that's it that's it guys we are going to be coming back with game number three very soon between wheel and elite wolves which will determine who will be the final winner as well as brackets and who will be going to the grand final against thunder awaken will it be a peruvian peruvian final or will it be an american versus peru final for the nationalistic bias let's see what happens we will be back shortly my name's been d swordfish here with vate if you want to follow us on twitter feel free to sh show us at uh, or follow us at d at the swordfish and at vate dota uh, where we post whenever we're online well sometimes we will post if we're online and it, when the games are going on and we'll be back shortly with game number three enjoy some tunes while we wait